Hello, I thought you might like to see my Philips Sterling Cycle Generator. Uh, this generator uh, was purchased by our local technical college in about, uh, I think it was 1961. Um, quite a few were made uh, by Philips, uh, but uh, they, they weren't a commercial success, I don't think, as uh, the semiconductor transistor came along and uh, made large batteries, etc., for radio equipment um, unnecessary. So anyway, our college bought this one as a, an educational uh, aid to demonstrate uh, various uh, aspects of thermodynamics. But anyway, um, it was uh, lingering in their stores for years, I think, pretty well untouched. And uh, I was lucky one day, about uh, 10 or 12 years ago, to purchase it from them. Uh, I've been a Sterling Cycle enthusiast for many, many years and uh, have read about Philips engines. And uh, w when I discovered there was one at the local technical college, I, w I was amazed. And uh, anyway, uh, luckily for me, they, they were prepared to sell it to me at a very reasonable cost, I might add. Uh, so I'm really pleased to have it. Um, I'll turn it around now, let you have a look at the other side. Luckily they tr treated it fairly well, it's not been knocked about too much. I've had to uh, do a, f a couple of little repairs on there, uh, rubber seals etc perished. Um, uh, and that's about it really. Oh, the, um, uh, the epoxy resin seals on the air chambers, it does, uh, these, these here, these seals here were uh, um, bad so I had to devise a, a, a make a tool for cutting the old epoxy resin out and uh, repair that. For those of you that aren't uh, familiar with the Philips engine, uh, this is the compressor. The engine, work, the engine works at um, elevated pressure. I, I'm not sure what the, the pressure is really. Uh, the, the pressure on the, on the the, on the pressure gauge here is uh, about 200 psi. But I think that's the starting pressure. I think. Uh, um, whoops. And this is the generator. This is the generator. That one uh, op uh, operates at 240, uh, 220 volts. And it's about 200 watts. Um, this is a float chamber, as you would have in a car carburetor. Um, it's a uh, just to keep the, uh, the 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 fuel level. It, it runs on paraffin, by the way, which uh, for our American friends, kerosene. This is a pressure regulator, and this one re uh, regulates the pressure for the the atomizer. The, the paraffin goes into this atomizer here and uh, goes into the um, combustion chamber. I'll show you from the top now. There it is. This is where the uh, the uh, the atomizer is in, in here. The um, combustion takes a, a place on the outside of the engine, of course, being a Stirling cycle engine, and. Uh, it is exo uh, the ex excess heat comes out through here. I wish it would stay in the engine, but it won't. <laughs> uh, I think that's about all I can say for the minute. Oops. These carrying handles uh, serve two purposes. They're to uh, obviously for transporting and holding the thing together, but also they store the air which the compressor produces uh, stores the air so that uh, you can start the engine next time this is one of the big failings of these engines is the fact that they do they don't really hold quite enough air um, I find that usually the air is exhausted before the engine is hot enough to run so usually I, I use an auxiliary means of uh, adding a little bit more air uh, to these 
uh, in order to get the engine to run. The, the starting process is rather tedious. It's a bit, uh, a bit fiddly and I think that's why they weren't a su success commercially. Um, or one of the reasons why they, they weren't uh, a success. Um, you will see there that I've, the engine has been pumped up now to uh, approximately um, what's it up now? 100, about 160, 165 psi. Um, the, 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 ma the manufacturer's handbook uh, recommend that you, 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 you blow these right up to 200 pounds to the square inch and uh, all ready for a next start but it, it can be a bit of a struggle to get to get that 200 pounds um, what else can I say about this gadget here is the um, oil separator what happens is the um, when the compressor which is here compresses the air to go into the engine um, you get condensation forming and also the the oil that gets past the the piston of the compressor uh, it ends up, it comes along here, the, the compressed air with, with some particles of oil and condensation come through here. Because this part is kept cold, um, the, uh, the condensation forms in here and you can re get rid of the condensation by turning this little valve and the, uh, the condensation ends up in a little cup in, in the bottom. This gadget here is a pressure relief valve and that when the when the when it gets to maximum working pressure, this one blows off and uh, sort of maintains the pressure at, at its maximum. This, of course, is is the cooling fan. This this one uh, uh, blows the air around here and keeps the cold end of the uh, the, the engine at, at as cool as it is possible. Um, also, there's some air that is bled off from here up through this pipe. Which uh, is the air for the uh, t t the atomizer valves that um, control the, um, uh, the this one here is uh, you open this one and the the, the peak pressure from the engine uh, come uh, uh, if when you open this one the peak pressure of the engine is transferred into into the in, into the uh, the reservoir um, the um, the pressure regulator. This one here, I've, I've got it set to about 20 pounds to the square inch, which is which I find is about the the right pressure. Uh, I, I run it on a, uh, I run it on a, a relatively low temperature, but, but as it's a rather a rare engine, I don't like to run it at its uh, proper um, temperature. Only the um, in the handbook they say we'll run it with the uh, with the hot cap glowing red. Well, I, it never glows red when I run it. I run it on the on the cooler side, and I think that will make for a longer life. Well, here she is running. Um, she does seem a, a little noisy. Uh, the uh, it's because she's in a bit of a confined space. And also the camera seems to make things seem a lot louder. On the meter she's running in a, a 100 watt lamp and at the moment uh, we've got um, <laughs> 270 volts, a little bit more. It, it needs loading down a bit really but I can't be bothered. Uh, I'll just show you the, around the engine now as it's moving.